Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Attachment. In today's episode, I'm sharing three pieces of advice or three life lessons that I wish I had learned sooner in life. Now, while I'm grateful to be relatively young and having learned these lessons, at least, you know, I think we're always learning and relearning lessons, but I feel like I've got a, a reasonable grip on the three that I'm going to share with you today. And while I'm grateful to have learned them relatively early on in life, I still wish I'd learned them sooner. And I think that I spent a lot of years in my really late teens and early 20s flailing a little bit in terms of my relationship with myself and some of my relationships with others on account of not really having a grasp of these lessons. So these are all around the themes of self-worth, self-respect, self-responsibility. And I think they're absolutely integral, no matter where you sit on the attachment spectrum, no matter your age or situation or background, these are really foundational to any kind of positive relationship with self. So I'm looking forward to sharing these with you today. Before I dive into that, this is the final call to join the Secure Self Challenge, which for those who are not familiar is my 28-day challenge all about building self-worth. We kick off next Monday, so about five days from when this will go live, and I would love to have you there. It's really short and sweet. It's very doable. It's kind of action-oriented rather than really heavy theory and long lessons and lots of stuff to do. And there's a strong community focus, so the community is already open. So if you were to sign up today, you would get an invite to the community where, you know, everyone is already sharing and connecting and getting to know each other. That's a space where you can also ask me questions and get feedback. And we've got a live call next week. So it's really great value. It's one of my most affordable, actually, it is my most affordable live program. And I would absolutely love for you to be part of it. So if you're at all interested, definitely check it out. It's in the show notes. It's on my website, stephanierig.com. And I would love to see you there. Okay. So let's dive into this conversation around three life lessons that I wish I'd learned sooner. Okay. The first one is you cannot outrun yourself. So wherever you go, there you are. I think this is so important because it's really easy for us to think that when we're in an unsatisfactory situation, relationship, job, whatever it might be, if you're feeling a bit stuck in life, and um, particularly where there's a theme where it's kind of a recurring pattern and you've been there before, you've felt that way before, it's so easy to convince ourselves that changing the circumstances, leaving the relationship or leaving the job, whatever, that doing that kind of outer work will resolve whatever inner conflict we're experiencing. And that's not to say that making environmental changes can't be part of that shift, that making healthier choices in terms of the relationships we're in or changing jobs if we're in a really toxic work environment, all of those things can be part of self-growth. But if we're not actually addressing the root cause of you know, how we got to where we are and what is it within us that has landed us in that pattern again and again, then there is every chance that you will find yourself in some version of that the next time round. It's, it's very rare that without the self-awareness and the intentional kind of reprogramming of those wounded parts of us, we're incredibly adept at recreating circumstances that bring us into contact with those things that reaffirm our negative core beliefs about ourselves and that reflect those things back at us. So if you have a core belief that you are unworthy of being in a healthy relationship, there is every chance that you are going to subconsciously seek out partners who reinforce that belief and who leave you feeling like you are not worthy of a good relationship, that you have to prove yourself, that you have to earn love, that you are going to be rejected or abandoned or whatever in favor of someone else who is better than you. All of these things follow us. Those are unresolved things that really need our attention. And if we keep turning our back on these parts of us rather than doing the really scary but courageous work of actually facing it and opening the can of worms and going, okay, how did I get here? What is it within me? What happened in my past? What shaped me in this way so that I developed with these beliefs that have gotten me to this circumstance again and again and again? Now, it's not comfortable work and that's why it's so easy to avoid, maybe to blame others or just to keep changing those external circumstances and running away from the problem. But when the problem is within us, there is no running away. There is no 
outrunning of you. (laughs) So the first lesson that I wish I had learned earlier is wherever you go, there you are, your patterns are coming with you unless and until you do the work to resolve them and to really learn a new way of being. Okay. The second one that I want to share with you is by not changing, by not making changes that you know you need to make, you are choosing more of the same. So what do I mean by this? I think that when we are not taking action towards a big life change or maybe a little life change, right? It could be just habit change. And this isn't just about relationships. This could be something like having healthier habits around like diet and exercise. It could be anything. But I think we tell ourselves that by not making the changes that we know we need to make, we're doing nothing. We're staying still, we're staying stuck, but really we're always in forward motion. Okay. So you're either in forward motion down the path that is leading you to more of what you want, being the kind of life you want, the kind of feelings you want to have about yourself, about others, about the world, fulfillment, joy, peace, self-respect, all of those things, Uh, you're either walking down that path or you are walking down the path that is leading you to more of what you do not want. So that might be more of the same, but know that in not making the changes and not taking action towards those changes, you are choosing more of the same. So just reframing it from a passive to an active thing, I think really wakes us up a bit to the self-responsibility involved in that of, oh, okay, I'm not just staying still. It's not that I'm you know, stagnant and passively existing in my life. Every day that I wake up and I just go through the motions of reenacting all of my habituated patterns, all of my conditioned ways of being, I make the choices that I know are not in service of how I want to live my life and the kind of life that I want. In doing those things, I am actively choosing more of the same, more of what is keeping me feeling unhappy, unfulfilled, anxious, stressed, burnt out, whatever it might be, you're choosing that by not making the changes that you know you need to make. So that is something that I absolutely wish I had learned sooner because I think that that would have jolted me a little into a bit more self-responsibility, a bit more agency, having a bit of a wake up call of like, this is on you. You can keep like living your life in this autopilot mode and making all of those changes, like a down the track thing, you know, oh, I'll do that like next year or later when I have more time, when I can be bothered or when things get really bad, whatever it might be. That's not just like saving it for later. That's choosing more of the same. It is walking further and further down the path that you don't want to be walking down. So be aware of that, really audit. Where am I choosing a life that I don't want? And am I contributing every day through my actions, through my tendencies, through my habits to the formation of a life that is not fulfilling to me? And what do I need to change today in order to change direction towards something that actually sounds good to me and sounds appealing to me in terms of the life that I want to be living? Okay. The third lesson that I wish I had learned earlier is that self-respect is something that you have to earn. Now I've spoken before on the podcast about self-respect. I think that self-respect is so, so important. I am far more interested in cultivating self-respect than self-love, not because I think there's anything wrong with self-love, but I just think self-respect is much more powerful in a really strong, authentic relationship with self. And for me, self-respect is all about value alignment. So am I showing up in a way that reflects my values? Do I know who I am? Am I comfortable with who I am? And do I act from that place? Or is there this big incongruence, this big gap between the kind of person I say I want to be and the way that I'm showing up? And I think it's a really good telltale sign that there is that gap. If you often feel like shame, discomfort, embarrassment, humiliation about the way that you've acted after the fact. So if you've done something that feels really icky and out of alignment and you don't feel good about it, that's a good sign of like, what is that telling me? Where have I not met my own standards for the kind of person that I want to be? And it's not about perfectionism. It's not about holding ourselves to an impossibly high standard of never making a mistake. But I think we all know when we're out of integrity and self-respect is just such an important thing to earn. And the good news is that you can earn it 
through the choices that you make and the actions that you take. You might notice that in each of these lessons that I'm sharing with you, there's a strong focus on actions and agency and self-responsibility because I think that those things are really what is within our control and so much kind of personal development advice is a bit abstract and really suffers from that, I think. It's like, you know, stop comparing yourself to other people and be kind to yourself and be loving and whatever. Those things can just feel so out of reach if all of that stuff is muscle memory, second nature. That's just so deep in your programming that you don't really know where to start. The actions that you take on a day-to-day basis are much more concrete and they're kind of easier to shine a light on and easier to see where the choice is. So we can go, oh, there's actually capacity for me to start building out a new branch from the tree here. There's actually capacity for me to choose a new way with this action and then the action after that and then the action after that and really just start that process of compounding that allows us to build out a new relationship with ourselves and a new way of being. So self-respect is not something that is just going to magically appear in your life. It's not something that you can think into being. You really do have to earn it. And I think that that is a good thing. This is not like saying you need to earn someone else's love or earn someone's approval, which I think generally carries a negative connotation. When I say self-respect needs to be earned, I think that is really calling you forth into a level of self-responsibility and accountability in your relationship with yourself. And to the extent that you feel you're lacking self-respect, there might be a reason for it. Okay. And that's kind of a hard truth that a lot of us maybe shy away from. But I think it's an important one. And certainly for me, and I've shared this before, at the times in my life when I really lacked self-respect, when I look back on it now, I think that that was exactly as it should have been because I wasn't behaving in a way that garnered self-respect. I really wasn't. And I think that the discomfort that I felt with that, the lack of integrity was a really important alarm bell that was pointing me towards where my work was. And I am so fortunate and I'm so grateful to myself that I heeded the message there and really worked on that aspect of my relationship with myself because I can really comfortably say now that I do have that internal relationship of self-respect. And that's so freeing. It contributes so much to a really embodied sense of self-esteem. It's really being able to hand on heart, say I'm comfortable with who I am. So that's been a huge one for me and is why I'm so bullish on self-respect relative to other things like self-love. So those were three life lessons that I wish I'd learned sooner. Just to recap quickly, it's wherever you go, there you are. You cannot outrun your patterns. They're coming with you until you you turn around and face them and do that courageous work of really tending to the parts of you that need your attention. The second one was by not making the changes that you know you need to make, you are actively choosing more of the same. So it's not just do nothing or make a change. It's continue walking down the path that I don't want to be walking down or walk down a different path. Okay. So really shifting into more of an active role there in the constant creation of whatever your life is. And the third one is that self-respect is earned. So you need to actively do the work through your day-to-day actions of bringing your values and your choices, your behaviors into alignment so that you have that real sense of integrity. I really hope that that's been helpful. If you enjoyed today's episode, I really do encourage you to sign up to the Secure Self Challenge. This is very much in keeping with what we talk about there and you know the lessons that we're putting into practice over the 28 days of the challenge. So I would absolutely love to see you there if this is up your alley as it is mine. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks, guys.